Hi guys, Harry here. Welcome to Scrap Science. Now, as you may have guessed, this is a car battery. Um, it hasn't been in a car for a while. Um, we've been using it for other things. Anyway, over the past year or so, this battery has been getting worse and worse um, as to how much energy it can store. And a couple of weeks ago, I tried charging it up and was only capable of charging it to eight volts. And that is a pretty sure sign that this battery is pretty much completely dead. So it's served us well, but we think it's about time to recycle the battery. I know a lot of the people watching this video will probably want me to try to revive the battery using like Epsom salt or whatever else people tend to try to fix their batteries with. But that is a lot of work in my opinion. And this battery, out of the six um, two volt cells that it has inside it, um, there must be at least two that are like completely dead if we're only getting eight volts. So it would just be a lot of work to try to revive uh, a battery like this. And I definitely don't want to do that. So we think it's definitely time to simply recycle this battery because that's the right thing to do with your lead acid batteries. But before we recycle it, there is one last thing we can get from this battery, which will be very useful, and that is the battery acid inside. So this is around about 35% sulfuric acid, and it's relatively pure, and there's a lot of it inside a battery like this. Sulfuric acid is an exceptionally hard chemical for me to find, so this will be very useful for me, and um, for a lot of other people who can't get sulfuric acid. I've heard uh, lately in the EU it's going to become a little bit more difficult to get hold of sulfuric acid so maybe retrieving it from car batteries uh, might be a viable option for a lot of people. But the first thing we need to do is to get inside the battery uh, to get all of the acid out. The easiest way I can see of doing that is to unscrew this hydrometer thing which was used uh, to tell when the battery was full and when it was empty. That's the hydrometer there. Might even be worth keeping that. Anyway, now that we have a hole in the battery uh, that goes right down into one of the cells, um, I'm thinking we will be able to just empty out some of the sulfuric acid. Maybe we'll only get the sulfuric acid out from one of the cells, uh, but that will be all right. It's also definitely a good idea to have some sodium bicarbonate and a solution of sodium bicarbonate on hand just in case of any spills. Alrighty, that is what we get from one of the six cells. I'll have to find a way to access the other five. And that is what we got from the whole battery. That is nearly three litres of our 35% sulfuric acid. Uh, to get the acid out of the other five cells, I ended up just um, drilling a few holes in um, the other cells of the battery so that we could pour it out. Um, but you'll notice that the acid we extracted is very, very dark and doesn't look very pure. That is, of course, tiny little bits of the lead and lead dioxide electrodes from the battery um, in suspension um, with our acid there. So what we're going to have to do is wait maybe a day or two for all of those to settle out and then hopefully we'll be able to just pour off the top of our sulfuric acid to get some pure stuff. We might even have to filter it too. And after nearly 24 hours of leaving it to settle, you can see it does look a lot better. Um, all of the lead particles, we assume, have sunk to the bottom of our container. However, it does still look a little bit murky, uh, especially near the bottom. Uh, so I think we are going to have to filter this as best we can, which I wanted to avoid, but uh, we'll do that anyway. So we do our best to slowly filter it. And that's it. After filtering, uh, it's looking a lot clearer. We've got out pretty much all of the whatever lead dust from the electrodes of the battery. Um, it could probably do with maybe one more 
um, run through a filtration but uh, that's what I'm going to leave it at today for the video. Now we get to the stage where I can actually talk about what I made this video for. Um, most people, well I've seen a few people on YouTube um, have a go at this, extracting um, sulfuric acid from car batteries and that's all well and good. They get to this stage and assume that they have relatively pure um, sulfuric acid with no lead contamination, assuming they filtered it all out. However, there is actually one last bit of lead contamination in this solution that is impossible to filter out, and that is the problem of having lead sulfate in the electrolyte here. As it was in the battery, uh, in contact with the lead electrodes and the lead dioxide, um, over time, through charging and discharging cycles of the battery, um, a bit of lead sulfate will dissolve into the solution here, um, it's not very soluble, of course. Um, lead sulfate is around about 0.4 grams per litre, I think. So maybe in this solution we'd have just a little bit over a gram, possibly. It might be less than that because maybe in sulfuric acid solutions the solubility of lead sulfate might be even less, but there is definitely a bit of lead sulfate in the solution here that can't be filtered out. What you should really do is, unless your work involves lead in the first place, uh, you should distill the acid, which is um, not an easy task, and that's a topic for another video. That will obviously remove the lead contamination from the sulfuric acid. Um, I realise that's not really an option for most people, so it's really just something to be mindful of, the fact that your solution of sulfuric acid that you extract from a car battery will always contain some lead. In fact, if we work hard enough, we can even see this lead. Um, what I've done here is reacted um, a small amount of sulfuric acid with some sodium carbonate. And what this has done is, first of all, the sulfuric acid reacts with the sodium carbonate in an acid-base reaction. But then once we've added an excess of sodium carbonate, you can see, if we get a good look here, there's just a small amount of milky suspension right there that I believe is lead carbonate yeah you can just see it in there floating around again it's not much but it is significant in a lot of cases with that said um, batteries are an excellent source of sulfuric acid and it is very close to pure stuff and you do get a lot of acid out of it um, this will last me years I would expect this amount of sulfuric acid so just keep in mind the lead contamination if you do this yourself and see you later.